Hey, I've noticed that on probably the majority of the Motovlog channels that a lot of people will often ask, what is the equipment that is used to get the sights and sounds? Well, you will not need to ask those questions because today I am going to answer them by showing you my helmet setup, which will include the equipment that I have and how everything is tied together. first thing I want to cover are the two major components of my setup. The first is my helmet, is a Shoei RF1200, which is a very popular helmet that's out there. Now when I bought this helmet I had no idea that eventually I was going to be getting into moto vlogging. So, and I'll tell you why I bring that up in just a little bit. The second major component of my setup is the camera. And I am currently using a GoPro 8. When I decided that I was going to get into mode of vlogging, I started with the GoPro 8 and then bought another camera that came out a few weeks later, which is the GoPro 9. So after handling both of them, I decided that I would use the 8 on the helmet and the 9 on the handlebar because the 8 is slightly uh, lighter than the 9. So it's uh, one and a half ounces uh, difference, as you can see in the insert. Now that I had the camera and the helmet and next was then how was I going to mount it onto the helmet and my first option was to mount it on the chin that's where I wanted it to to go and the GoPros come with a mount and as you can see this one is slightly curved which is perfect for most helmets now however it is not perfect for the Shoei RF1200 and I will show you why Looking at the chin, which is where, again, was my preference on where I wanted my mount to go, when I put the curved piece on the chin, it does not cover the full surface area of the mount because of this ridge that goes right through the center of the chin horizontally. So that leaves gaps. No matter which way you try to position this thing, there are several gaps or it's just wobbly. So I didn't think that that was going to work. Now I have seen where a lot of guys will put uh, some adhesive on there. They will use uh, something like JB Weld or other similar products to fill those gaps and have more of a secure mount on there. Um, so I was looking at that as a po potential alternative, but uh, in the meantime I'd also decided well maybe I will mount it somewhere on the side because this mount will fit nicely on the side and as you can see it pretty much covers the entire surface area. So I looked at that as an option. However, I did not want the camera to be on the side of the helmet because that creates a blind spot for the viewer. So I wanted to put the mount to the helmet somewhere in here, but I still wanted the camera somewhere near the front on the chin. So fortunately, there are a lot of other products out there that will help do that, such as this one. I found it on Amazon. And by the way, I will have all of the links below to everything that I'm talking about. So I decided that this was probably the way that I was going to go and I would feel the most comfortable with it and uh, not have to put other types of adhesive on there. So it would have looked something uh, along these lines uh, right here. So I was probably in the 11th hour of getting ready to mount this on my helmet and one evening I happened to be surf surfing around on the web, still looking for something else. And I happened to find a company in Canada, I believe, that creates a mount. They create several mounts and they are specific to uh, particular models of helmets. So as you can see here, this one was made specifically for the Shoei RF1200. So I ordered that and I got it within about five days and that then solved all of my problems. So I've been very comfortable with this. So again, so the name of the company, by the way, is called Chin Mounts at chinmounts.com and I will have that in the uh, description below. So like I said, they make several different types of mounts for other brands of helmet and other specific models of helmet. So I was pretty happy with the mount 
And uh, so now after I've got everything mounted, then the next step was to simply install the camera and connect all the connections to the microphone and go from there. So that's what we will do next. Before I mount the camera to the chin mount, one of the things that I need to show you right now is that the GoPros, the battery cover over here, you must remove that in order to get access to hook up your microphone. So you pull down, open it up, and it needs to plug in to this a USB-C port. To do that, you either have to take and leave this cover open or remove the cover or get a replacement battery cover. And I have a replacement battery cover and I will show you what that has. So I will just snap this one off, put the other one in its place, and as you will see, it has an open port that allows the connection to the microphone port or the USB-C port, which also uh, contains the connections for the microphone. But anyway, so now that we have that on there and in place, I can go ahead and mount the helmet to the chin mount. Okay, so next we have two more pieces of equipment that we need to install. And first, let me just show you that inside the helmet, um, already installed, and I will not be showing you how to do that in, in this video, but it's basically a lavalier microphone that looks something like this. And I will just show you real quickly where it is in the helmet. So you can see it's off to the side, and it's this one right here. Hopefully you can see that right where my thumb is. It's coming out of the cheek pad on the right side of my helmet. So not to be confused with the microphone that I have right in the center. That is for my cardo communication. So, but I do not use that for motovlogging. So it's only this microphone here. So with the microphone in there, we have to get it connected to the camera. Now in order to do that, Unfortunately, the GoPros do not have a way that you can plug a microphone directly into it. You must use what is called a mic adapter, which is sold by GoPro, which is right here. So this portion will plug into the camera, the USB-C, and then at the other end is the place for the microphone to plug into. So that's what we will do next. We will hook this up. First, we can start by plugging it into the side of the camera and you can see I already have in place some adhesive to hold it in place and by the way I am not using velcro I am using these scotch what they simply call fasteners so I'll just show you that real quick and you've probably seen these before they're made out of vinyl and uh, they're real easy to use so I'm just going to snap that in place for the moment and then the only thing left to do is to connect this port to that port. However, it's not as easy as it sounds because if it were that easy, I would simply take this plug and put it into that jack. But this plug, as uh, a lot of microphones nowadays have, if you look at the rings on that, and hopefully this is in focus, but basically this is uh, considered a TRRS plug. It's 3.5 millimeter and TRRS stands for tip, which is right here, and then two rings. That's one R, that's the second R, and then the sleeve is at the bottom. But unfortunately, it will not work if you plug that directly into that port. You need an adapter to go from TRRS to TRS. And I will show you that. And here is an adapter that does exactly that. So you plug the TRRS into this end, and then you can see what's left. It converts it to what you would normally think of as a standard stereo jack. This is simply a TRS because it has the tip, one ring, and then the sleeve. So well, now one of the things I will say um, that this adapter came with my microphone 
which I will mention just briefly. Then the microphone that I chose is called Purple Panda. And again, it's on Amazon. I will put the link below. So this adapter comes with it, which is why a lot of people out there recommend the Purple Panda microphone. A, they recommend it for its sound quality, and B, they recommend it because it comes with everything you need in order to hook it up to uh, the mic adapter by GoPro. So setting that aside for the moment, so we just simply plug this in to both ports. And that's all there is to that. I do not do anything to secure that because it's not really going to go anywhere. So I'm pretty pleased with, uh, with that setup right there. Now, one of the things that I will mention about the microphone on the inside is a, a couple of things. Number one, if you may have noticed that I use a foam windscreen such as this. Now, the Purple Panda came with a foam windscreen and it also came with a fuzzy windscreen, which a lot of people refer to this as a dead cat. Now, before I did my first moto vlog, I uh, put, I experimented with both types of coverings, and what I found was the dead cat, because of the way that all of the fuzzy hairs connect on the inside, there's a thick material inside there that's holding this all together. There is a hole over here that you slide it over the microphone. It's hard to see because this thing is so well covered. Uh, but that portion slides over the microphone and then you have this that is left and the idea is that the fuzzy hair catches the wind uh, before hitting the microphone and it pretty much deadens the wind. But I found that the problem with this is because the material inside is so thick it actually muffled the sound. So for me I felt like I got a better sound out of using the foam windscreen over the dead cat. A lot of other people say they prefer the the dead cat, but, and I think that they, prob they are probably choosing that more because of its uh, ability to block the wind more so than its sound quality. But speaking of wind, one other thing that I found was one, one item that came with my helmet is the chin curtain. So when I put this in place during all of my experiments, that also helped cut down on all of the wind that was hitting the microphone. So my setup is I always use the wind, uh, the chin curtain and I use the foam windscreen and that seems to work best. So I feel like I'm pretty pleased with the sound quality that I'm getting out of, uh, out of my setup uh, in its current state right now. So that's it. I know a lot of people are always curious as to what everyone uses for moto vlogs, for recording and for sound and mine is all in one. It's right here, both the video and the sound. I know some people use separate sound recorders, but I'm happy with the way this one is working right now. Hopefully this video helped you. See you next time.